We've been off for two weeks. Um, I'm Jared Lucky along with Mari Stein, Dwayne Garza, and Jeff Stivers. Um, we're going to have uh, Coach Alvarado here from the football team and some of the players, and then later on we'll have uh, Coach Griggs from the volleyball team. And then uh, we're going to have Dwayne's dad on later on in our community corner. Um, a lot of things have happened since the last time we've been on. Medina Valley defeated Bernie Champion 35-34, and then they went on the road to play Kennedy last Thursday. They beat them 42-7, to and this week is homecoming against Uvalde. Um, and we'll just go uh, straight into our coaches segment with Coach Alvarado. Coach, thank you for joining us this, this, uh, this evening. Thank you for having us. Um, and coach, what, what, do you, what do you coach for the football team? I'm the offensive line coach, one of the offensive line coaches, and also head powerlifting coach in the offseason. Okay. And, uh, Coach, your, your offensive line has looked very good the last few weeks. Um, I know we gave them the, the whole offensive line player of the game against Bernie Champion. Um, they played very well. They played well against Kennedy, opened up some big holes for Gibson and some of the other guys to run through. And uh, I know they – through some passes too and uh, doing some good job protecting the passer and uh, what are some of the things you're you're you improved on this year so far and some of the things you want to see from your offensive line going forward in district well one of the first things is that it all started in offseason these young young men have ha had a great offseason this past year and they believed in what we're trying to do and get them strong and they believed in the weight room and that's first and foremost I think our strength uh, has really helped us tremendously on the line. And, it, you know, it's making us even better, more effective. Uh, our kids work hard. I'm real proud of them. They work real hard. They do everything we ask. And they want to get better. And they have a great attitude. And uh, they know how important they are, the, the, the role that they have on our team, and how important it is that they do their job every play. they 111th, as we call it. Yep. Well, Coach, Murray. as far as the the lifting part is concerned, what do you concentrate more on the lower body or the upper body, or, or do you break it down? One day we're going to do chest, back, shoulders. The next day we're going to work on triceps, biceps, legs. Or what is the what is the the basic Monday through Tuesday? What is the weightlifting format for each one of those days well coach moreno is our off-season coordinator and he does a heck of a job and you know i've worked with him before he came he was with us in alice and uh he's done a tremendous job getting our kids strong and i just help him out and usually you know we'll start with our our leg day uh on mondays uh we'll go bench on tuesdays and sometimes we'll do a full body workout and so forth but he has a, a regiment that the kids are accustomed to and they get after it and they they put on the weight and they know that you know we need to lift the weight to to move people as far as your then i don't want to put you on the spot but your strongest offensive lineman who would you say that would be as far as being able to put up the most weight well, right now, I have a junior at center, Spencer Payne, who's probably one of the strongest kids I've ever been around. Uh, I've been in, in this business for 32 years, and he's one of, the, one of the strongest I've ever been around. Right behind him is Jonah Barrow. And uh, these kids have been working hard. All the, all the offensive linemen have made great improvements, and it's, you know, we're reaping the benefit of their work, and that's a good thing to see. What, are the major what is the majority of your offensive linemen compared to – the ones that you're going to have in your powerlifting are, are they the same individuals? They're pretty much the same, and uh, it's a it's a different. It'll be a little different workout, but it's all power. And uh, you know, we concentrate on lower body. We want we want the lower body to be strong. We want them to be strong upper body also, and it all deters injury. So we're gonna you know we're gonna spend a lot of time uh, making sure we lift the, those weights four times a week. And each each coach uh, we had uh, Eric in here. Uh, the second week, and he's more of the offensive skill players. Do they have the same lifting regimen, or do, or do they concentrate more on on speed weights rather than heavy weights, or is it no, all the same? We do all the same, and uh, they all do the workout the same, and, and they do it just as, as with as much as intensity as alignment. And, you know, they know that it's, it's going to pay off. And they've bought into our program, Coach Sosa's program, and, and what he's done and, and what, where we, what we're all about. Well, you can actually, and we've talked about it, you know, watching the, the team, and you can tell 
just by the explosiveness explosiveness on the offensive defensive lines that the strength conditioning and everything has improved since coach Sosa has brought in this new regime Absolutely. and it, it's it's head and shoulders difference uh, according to how the other team is getting pushed off the line by the offense and the defense and it's like you say it begins in the weight room yes sir it sure does and you know they believe in what we're trying to do and they they work hard every day and, and they want to get better every day and every week and like we always tell them coach Herbert and myself we tell them hey we got to win every play we got to win every series and we got to win every quarter and we got to do your part and things will take care of themselves um, looking forward to this week's game against Uvalde coming in for homecoming. What are uh, what are some of the things? Are they going to do anything defensively? To, what are some of the things you're going to see from them? Well, they're gonna, they've shown some different defenses, and, uh, you know, we've prepared. Uh, we're doing what we we always do every week. We prepare, prepare our kids. We expect – Expect them to be moving a lot, and we expect them to, you know, give us give us some looks that we hadn't seen. But we're going to be okay. We're going to we're going to we've been working hard, and the kids have been picking it up, and we're just going to keep on blocking till the whistle blows. Well, and the thing is, and we've noticed it all year. Each game, it seems like they're getting better and better, which is good, and it helps that probably two of your toughest games of the year are going to be your last two. So it helps that you've been able to have a season to build on game after game. Yes, and and like we tell them, every game, every week is a preparation. It's different. It's a different team, and uh, we respect our opponents, and we just want to get better and get better than what we were the week before. Right. We talk to, always talk to, to both Eric and and uh, head coach Coach Sosa. Coach Sosa after eight o'clock mass all the time on Sundays, and we ask him, me and my brother, what what does Uvalde what do you have to do to, to beat Uvalde? And he, he kind of reminisced that you cannot let them hang around. They're a team that if you let them hang around, they can be dangerous. On paper, they match up good. But on the film, you know, not being biased or anything, but, he, you know, they both said that we should be able to take care of business. But they're a team, if you let them hang around, they scored 28 points against Kerrville Tyvee. So they can score the points. But that's where I'm going to. Your offense, your offensive line needs to make sure that they open the holes, and our best defense will be that offensive line. Yes, we expect we expect some good things from our from our kids. You know, working hard. Like I said, they've had a good week of preparation, and if we continue to do what we're doing uh, every play, like we we tell them, we should be okay. But we need to make sure. You know, again, we respect our opponent, and we need to be better than them every play. And and you lost a big key two weeks ago in, in Yancey Miller. What is his status? Is is he going to have surgery or is he scheduled for surgery? And what was his injury? Yancey is uh is right now going through rehab and he, it wasn't torn. It wasn't a, te- a torn a torn ACL or MCL. It was uh, I believe it had to do with his patella uh, patella tendon. tendon. Yes, and so I think it was a dislocation of it. But he's coming along and he's walking around and. And he's really excited. He's out there, you know, being a cheerleader for his teammates, being a great teammate and uh, encouraging them and making sure they're doing everything right and being another coach out there. Well, and you had an injury on that offensive line the first week. And it's like Coach Osa said and Coach Moreno, it's the next man up. And so far you've been able to plug in one right after another because y'all had them so ready to go, and that's preparation every week. Showing that that y'all have them mentally prepared, that if somebody goes down, it's the next guy up, and and they've stepped in and did tremendous. Yes, the backups are probably um, most important in in any team because uh, they're they're one play away from being the starter, and and you know it's happened, and we've had some kids uh, step in and they're doing a tremendous job. They're getting better. Uh, the big key is they want to get better. And anytime you have that on a team, you're going to have some some good things happen. And our backups are very important, and they get all the reps that we 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 give them, and we get them prepared because they are going to be the next man up. You know, we we talked to we talked to a couple of them here previously that are here on the show, and they're they were excited. I mean, they understand their role and they're ready to go. And when they get the opportunity, you guys have coached them up well, and and. And they're smart. They know the plays, and they're ready to go the way that, according to our interview last time, 
I mean, they were excited and, and just they were part of the team and they knew that. One observation too I wanted to say real quick is, as you talked about, you've got the, the kids believing into what they're doing and the weightlifting and everything. And and one thing I want to mention is, is you not only got them believing in that, you got them believing in the coaching staff too. And I think that's a big deal. One of the, the things about that's helping us win this year is there's belief into the coaching staff. And you can see it from the stands, you can see it from everybody watching that the, the, what you putting the product you put on the field is is got belief in, belief in you guys now. So big kudos to the coaching staff. Well, we appreciate that very much, and we appreciate all the support that we're getting, yes. and our, our kids deserve it. it. It it's it's called trust, and when you get the, the when you trust the people above you to lead you, you're going to be a great follower. Yep. All right, guys. Um, thank you, coach, for for joining us here this evening, and we'll. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll get the players on here. And th thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it, Coach. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you, Coach. We're, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then we will come back. You're listening to Sports with, for Supper at Sammy's, and we'll return in just a moment. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. At North Park Chevrolet in Castroville, we offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks, and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit, with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now, and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer because that's how we do business with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Are we starting over here? Welcome back here to Sammy's Restaurant. We're live here, and we're going to go on and talk to some of the players in just a second, but I'd like to take this chance to thank uh, IMS Metal Fabrications. They're a proud sponsor of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Uh, thanks to the McCool Brothers for uh, sponsoring the show here, and thank you to Sammy's for letting us have this show here every week. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to move into the football players, and we're going to start with Jonah Barrow and uh, – and Jonah, uh, thanks for thanks for joining us here this evening. Uh, what what grade are you in? Uh, I'm a senior. You're a senior, and what is your position on the offensive line? Uh, I'm left tackle. Left tackle. And what are the things that you are looking for specifically at your position when the defense lines up against you? Well, it usually depends on what defense they're on, but a lot of the time um, I'm going for a linebacker. Okay. Uh, and I know that Medina Valley is a more predominant running football team. When you throw, what are some of the things that you're looking for there? Well, as I said, once again, it's just it depends how the defense is lined up. Yep. We have to tell uh, what the defense is going to do, like if they stunt, if they just run base or whatever they do. Um, usually I'm just um, staying back or depending on what pass play. Um, I just stay back and protect Alec. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. yeah. That one play in the huddle that you're looking forward to when – it comes in from the sidelines, and you say, this is the one I really like. This is the one I'm going to take that guy on the other side of the line. I'm going to pancake him. I'm going to pour syrup and everything <laughs> else on him. 622 tackle trap. And what, is, what, what does that entail? Uh, who, well, who, who carries the ball? Who are you blocking? Who are you pancaking? And who, is op who are you opening the hole for? I'm really not sure who 
uh, carries the ball, but <laughs> I, I turn, I trap the guy, or first man past the center, and I do my best to hit him as hard as I can, and it opens the hole. So After that. Is that an option play? That's why you run all carries the ball, or is it just different players that run the ball? It's, it's, it's the tailback. So, so it's going to be Salas or Pardo or, Pardo or Pardo. Wesley Pardo and yeah. Jacob Salas. But the trap play is the one you like? Yes, That's sir. usually number 23 that runs, mm -hmm. runs yes, that sir. one. So you're taking, you said you're taking the guy off the center? Uh, first man past center, so if there's a guy to the right of center, he's my man. And so I, I do a quick pull, I kick him out. You chip him and go to the, get the linebacker also? No, that's my one guy, but if he comes too far upfield, I'll turn up and go find someone downfield and block block someone. Yeah. It works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I would imagine um, – Usually lined up over you is probably a defensive end, I would imagine. Yes. Somebody there, outside linebacker, somebody right there. Yes. Um, I would imagine that they're usually not bigger than you are. Does that does that help your psyche a little bit? Do you just know, like, hey, this guy's lined up over me. I can just <clears throat> drive him back? Well, Or do I'm you ever worry about, hey, this guy is actually pretty stout. He might – he might. Does that ever play into like your conscience yeah. or anything like that? Well, with the DNs, I'm more worried about how fast they are and yeah. how they use their hands. Um, I'm not really scared of size or strength, um, but if they're quicker than me, I just got to really focus and I have to make sure I take the right steps and get to where I need to be as fast as I can. And that's all preparation. Yeah. Yep. And um, all right. You, what, well, I got another question. Go ahead. Would you rather have a defensive tackle? Or a, a guy in a three-point three stance over you? Or four-point stance? Or would you rather have somebody stand up to where you got to worry about their speed? Uh, I kind of like the faster guys because once I can hit them, uh, I can hit them hard and they go down a little easier. Or they move a little easier. Um, uh, playing with those bigger, the bigger D-tackles, a little harder to uh, maneuver them how you need them. But, um, yeah, I think I prefer the D-end over the D-tackle. And, and when you say the D-end... He's usually going to be standing up out to your outside shoulder, correct? It'll be to the outside, but a lot of times they're down in a stance. And you just drive them off the ball, right? Yes, sir. What other uh, sports do you play? Well, I just do uh, – I play football, and I am in the, I'm on the powerlifting team. powerlifting, too? Yes. Any powerlifting questions for more? Nope. Just don't get the bench buddy shirt. Mm. Lifting shirt. Nah, I use a katana. There you go. All right, um, we're going to pass the mic along to Josh Valenzuela. And, uh, Josh, thanks for being here. Thank and, you for having uh, me. What, uh, what grade are you? I'm also a senior. You're also a senior. And what is your position? I'm a guard. Your guard? Yes, sir. Uh, right or left? Does it um, I'm a quick guard. Usually I'm lined up on the left. we got to flip-flop every now and then. What okay. number are you, Josh? I'm number 52. And what what are you looking for when, when you – get down what are the things that you're looking for defense on the defense on the defense i'm looking i'm looking for linebacker most of the okay. time if there's a guy lined up over me i'm looking to see what hands he has down uh really the look in his eyes and see how how fast this get off is going to be okay um what i'll i'll take mari's question here what's the one play that you want to hear called in the huddle that that's your favorite all the sweeps all the sweeps. All the sweeps. Why is that? I love pulling around. Usually, uh, usually, Feet. I'm I'm over here on these big 300 pound DTs. Every time I get to pull around, go up on a little linebacker. It's a little something sweet. <laughs> them little linebackers, though, if you look at our side of the ball on defense, them little linebackers can hit you pretty hard too. They can. It's definitely a lot easier going up against a 200-pound linebacker than a 300-pound DT, though. Plus you get a running start at him, right? And I get a running start. Go ahead. So when you're – you say you're on the weak side? Quick or side. Quick side. So which, what does that mean, quick side? What, is that the side where the tight end is or is that the other side? That is the opposite we're, we're side of the We're trying to explain end. to the people out there listening, so that's why I'm asking that question. Yes, sir. Uh, it's the opposite side of the tight end. It could be the weak side too, though. Yeah. So who who is when you say you flip flop? Who do you flip flop with? I flip flop with um, Gian Marcos and Yancy Miller. 
we flip flop sides and uh same thing with the tackles the tackles flip flop with us and that determines that's determined by what play is called in the huddle or it's just a formation if we change the formation to throw them off we get down uh flips flip sides because often uh the defense will have to flip sides as well and uh we break out of the huddle as fast as we can and try to get them off guard so not to put you on the spot but would you rather line up next to him or or the other side the other tackle. The other tackle. I've got them both every time. I've got Joan every time, and uh, there has been a couple occasions where I have to line up against uh, Josh McAllister, and uh, he's just as good. I, I'd have them both on any day. I know they have my back. There you go. Um, what are what are some other sports that you play? Um, I'm also a power lifter. You are. All right. Did y'all? Did any of y'all go to the state tournament last year? Spencer did. Good. So what what is your strength? The deadlift? Uh the squat. The squat? The squat for what sure. What do you squat? Um last year PR and squat was uh four ten. Wow, that's good. Especially for the weight class. Yes, sir. I'm a one forty eight. That's good. Good. All right. Uh Josh, thanks for thanks for joining us this evening. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Um, let's move on to uh, Geo, and is it is it Villafane or Viafane? It's Villafane. Villafane, okay. And uh, Geo, what grade are you? I'm a junior. You're a junior, okay. Uh, what what is your position? I play strong guard for Yancey. Oh, okay. Um, so you've stepped in in, in his injury. Yes. That's, and uh, I mean that's got to be. You've had to stay pretty prepared coming into that, I would imagine. Yes, sir. Um, well, when when yes, I didn't really. I was just watching the game, and then I see him. I see. I saw him went down. I was like, "Oh, that's Yancey." <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's 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 go time. Reality, yeah. huh? Reality kicked in. Next guy up. That's what they say. Always be prepared, and you step, you've done a good job stepping. Absolutely. In. Well, we've heard Thank the coaching guys. staff I appreciate it. preach that all year about, "Hey, that's next right. guy up, stepping in," and that that's that's a big key. And that's part of the football. That yep. really is, and it, it'll never change. You know, because injuries injuries are key in football. Your favorite blocking play. Uh, Josh kind of stole my answer, but I do like the screens. I like the the fullback screen strong. Um, usually, it just shows us that it shows people that us linemen can get down the field. We have speed too. And you also want to make sure that when 46 has the ball, you better open a hole up for him, or you're going to hear. Yes, he'll rip e me even in the at huddle. the game, or and you probably hear it when you get home too, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's his brother, oh. 46. So, and and. Your, what other sports do you play? Well, I I do I do um, perform in track, and I'm going to perform in powerlifting this year too. Powerlifting, yes, sir. What do you run in track? I don't you run track. I throw power uh, field events. I throw discus. Disc. What's your furthest throw? Uh, like 109. That's about it. Well, that's not bad. No, Spencer <laughs> throws like 130. So he's got a little size on you. He does. It's unfortunately it's not like powerlifting where you go with weight classes you got to yeah. go up against the big ones every well that's the same thing with football mm. so your favorite play is the same as yeah i like the sweeps i pretty much like the sweeps because i have a little speed on so it. who who are you going after when you block well you, it, it depends on the sweep like we'll run a quick side sweep or a strong side sweep uh, if we run the strong side sweep i'll usually be kicking out like a corner but if we run um a, a quick side sweep i'll be usually kicking out linebacker coming through so you like the quarterback side better huh yes i do <laughs> <laughs> you know geo you and spencer have something in common is, is both y'all have played Uvalde before i mean your junior high years you both i don't know about your freshman i don't think we played but you you've seen this team before um do you remember anything against them or to watch out for or what, what are you looking for from past experience um i don't know if i'll see the same numbers i didn't really i didn't really play my eighth grade year oh, um okay. uh my brother did but uh it's one of my deepest regrets, not playing. Hey, but now's the time, right? Yes, sir. It's time. Now's the time. And you've got next year also, so that's great. Yep. Yep. Uh, Gio, thanks for, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. And now we're going to go to Spencer Payne. Spencer, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, what grade are you? I'm going to be a junior, or I am a junior. You are a junior. And what, what <laughs> position are you on the I'm, offensive line? I'm the center. You're, oh, you're the center. Okay. Uh, so... Is it your job to call out blocking assignments, or do they just know what they're doing when they get to the line of scrimmage? 
Um, well, I, I definitely assist them in okay. calling out assignments. Okay. Um, and what what determines, I guess, what they're showing you determines what you're calling out. But, like, what are some of the things, like, the, or key that you look for? Like, when you come up there, what's the first thing you're looking for? So the first thing I look up, uh, the first thing I look for when I go up there is what defense they're in. And a lot of times it, it changes um, where the guards and where I'm blocking. So I just I just look for what defense they're in, and it tells me, you know, what blocks we're supposed to make. Okay. How many teams have we played so far that, that – a Noah's guard is lined up right over the top of you. Uh, I think it's been all but one. So would you prefer five. the three four look or the four three? No, I like a I like the three four better. I like having a nose guard. You want him face face to face with you, see yes. see what smell what he ate for mm-hmm. supper, <laughs> and sir. vice versa. Yes, sir, what's your favorite call? Your favorite play? Um, I think my favorite play is uh, four thirty two. It's uh, it's one of our short traps where the guard traps, and I get to block back, and I get to have a little fun hitting somebody in the side. <laughs> and who's carrying the ball in that situation? Uh, James. Hmm. You don't have to open too much of a hole for him, do you? <laughs> no, sir. How many times has he ran up the back of you and you got his cleat mark on the back? Never. Never. There you go. What what kind of confidence does it give you all knowing that when he gets hit, he's usually not going to fall right away, that he can drag some players does that give you all a little extra confidence knowing that, hey, if my guy does get a hand on him, he's going to run through him? Does that does that help your psyche knowing that? Yeah, it definitely boosts our morale. You know, we try and do the best job we can blocking our guy, you know, till the whistle blows. Um, so it doesn't always work out, but it is nice to have him there, you know, being able to break tackles and keep driving people. Yeah. Toughest defender you've played so far? Um, none of them. Oh, <laughs> oh hey, hey, there you go. Okay. Okay, well, there you go. Um, you, you, Valdi coming up, it's homecoming. Um, I didn't ask any of y'all that either. Um, what does that do? Does that give you a little extra boost knowing that it's homecoming this week? Does that does that play into y'all's anything? No, no it, we're focused on the football game. The homecoming's That's for good. the fans and, you know, I like the alumni That's and all good. that. I like that. That's the best answer I've heard. Yep, for sure. They don't get all into the – Hype all that stuff. Um, Uvalde coming up this week. What what are some of the things that you see defensively that are going to be key for you? You know, looking at them. Well, they uh, they run a little bit defense than we're a little bit different defense than we're used to, and uh, they like to stunt a lot with the linebackers. And so, um, depending on what defense they're in, you know, I'll, I'll make the call when we go up to the line. And uh, we've we've practiced different defenses that we're not used to so I think we'll be ready for it and and being the center I noticed in the last game y'all went from the shotgun a lot more does that affect you a lot knowing you know usually you're handing the ball straight to the quarterback now you're snapping it you know three or four yards behind you does that does that play into you any yeah it, it does um but I've I've practiced it a lot and I'm used to it I'm comfortable with snapping either way mm-hmm, changing yes. it up during the game yep. so hand the mic back over to these two gentlemen right quick. Y'all can answer at the same time because y'all play the same position. Would you rather have a team that, that is more of a, a run in a stunt, a run stunt blitz or one that's passing? What would you rather be blocking? Um, a pass play or, or a running play? I like, well, it depends It depends on the defense once again. Um, I like I like the pass plays because it it uh it shows how our sh- it shows our grit it shows that we can handle them even though we're, we won't be able to move. Um, personally, I prefer the run game a little bit more. Uh, it's definitely an easier block for me to make. Uh, mostly because of my weight. I mean, I do a, I'd like to think I do a pretty good job uh, pass blocking, but uh, it's definitely it takes a little bit more effort than. Run blocks. More movement and more containment and more one-on-one, having to sustain that block a little bit longer. Yes, sir. Mr. Barrow, how about you? Runner, runner, pass. Well, I I don't really have a preference. Um, I just want to get my job done, and at once the play is over, if we are successful and get yardage, I, that that's what makes me happy. And I would think you were going to say the run because you just want to plow into that guy across the line. Looking at your your – body it's it's like a uh, you and y'all are like stone i mean it's just unbelievable it's like a cinder block i just want to be one to just pound the guy across the 
Well, like, you know, pancake them. <laughs> well, those run plays are fun, but every now and then, since usually the DN tries to run outside of me, it's a little easier to get a hold of them and take them where take them where he wants to go, drive them outside, and I still get I still get a little bit of the the push in there. That's what makes it fun. All right, uh, thank you guys for for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Um, it was good to have you all. Yeah. And, and hopefully we're going to give the player of the game again to the offensive, offensive line. Yeah, whole line. Y'all done a great job. Keep Absolutely. Yep, keep it up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break. Thank y'all, guys. And then we're going to move into our, uh, our volleyball segment. Uh, we will return in just a moment. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. From the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night, Electricity plays an important role in our lives, but most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at medinaec.org. Double T Outfitters offers deer, duck, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. Qualifications, rules, and limitations apply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do okay. it? All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Casasa Cashback is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Casasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. You want Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Sammy's Live, and uh, we just had our football segment. We're going to move on to the volleyball segment. I'll turn it over to Dwayne for that. Coach Griggs, uh, welcome back. Good to have you back again. It's been a little while since we've talked. I know we've taken a couple of weeks off. But first, let me say congratulations. I understand we clinched a playoff spot last night. We did. That's great. We're that, excited. Yes, with with another big district win last night. So right now you guys are twenty eight and eight. Your overall record. You played thirty four matches so far. I mean, that that's a lot of court time. Let me tell you. You stand at eleven and three in district. Um, when was the last time Medina Valley has been in the playoffs? I think we're twenty six and eight. Is it twenty six? Yeah, twenty six and eight. Eleven yeah. and three in district. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's been three years since we've made the playoffs. It's been three years since we've been in the playoffs. So I mean, it's been eight since we've won a playoff game. It's been eight years since we've won a playoff. So uh -huh. we've we've um, it's we've been got a while. Yeah, yeah, we're ready, aren't we? Uh huh. We're ready for this. Um, and also, I understand. Is, is there a chance to set some all-time wins? Yes. Um, we need two to tie it, and we need three to break it. To break it. So we would go into that first playoff game to try to break it. Yes, or we if we need a warm-up match, we could schedule that, too. So explain a warm-up match. What is that? Because um, we have a game that we, we still could pick up. So if so we, we finish on a Tuesday, and you still have the Friday available. Is right. That so okay. if we're not playing off for a playoff, um, we could pick up a match and just have a warm-up game if we wanted to. Okay. Um, not saying we would. I'm just saying it's yeah, you could. I if you need to. Okay. Yeah. The, only, the only team that would have a chance – where you would end up in a tie would be against would be Southwest, right? That we would tie, yes. But if, if y'all went out, you have the tiebreaker over them. Well, you, you're a game ahead of them already. Right, right, right. So the last time we talked, we we had upcoming games of Southwest Legacy, where you won 3-0, uh -huh. which, which was a good game, a good pickup for us. And then against Southwest, and we lost that set that match 3-0. That was kind of a tough one. To me, it was kind of unexpected because we had previously beat them, but Southwest has gotten better. They did, and we were still, I mean, Megan wasn't 100%. That's right. Um, she had just re-rolled her ankle. So her movement, we did, had a hard time slowing the ball down on the outside. And, you know, I told them we just need to get beat because we weren't playing well. So well, I think it helped us refocus. As I say, sometimes a loss is, is not a bad thing always. 
I mean, it does. It, it probably got you guys refocused because you had a big match coming up following that against Harlan, and we knew Harlan was going to be tough. You took him down to the wire. You came out on the short end, but you lost 3-2, and I know Maury was at that game, and it was a very exciting game. Um, it, it was everything it was supposed to be. The expectations were high and a lot of electricity in the air. It had a big playoff atmosphere, Harlan did. So um, you came out on the short end, though, but you bounced back real quick. You, you played uh, Eagle Pass win on the 12th and won that one 3-0. to zero. And then last night, Somerset, which I expected to be a lot tougher based on how they played last time, and um, but we handily beat them last night, 3-0. to zero. Right, and it's a hostile environment. I mean, you go in there, and it was like, what else could they throw at you? It was pink night. It was junior high night. Well, not to mention the, that Somerset's a big rivalry. I mean, as far is. as I'm concerned, it's been off and on with Somerset for years and years and years. And um, it's one of those games that you want to win. And we've had a, quite a few of those we talk about in football all the time that that uh, you can throw records out the window when you have a rivalry game. It, it's just that we want to beat them so bad. And and and, um, and for me personally, be, and, and when you watch some of these games, because you, you play home and away, home and away, it's two times, two district rounds you play them. And some of these coaches, I don't want to see. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and I don't know if this guy falls into it, but he's on my list now that I want to beat him. Whether I don't care what their record yeah. is. Yeah, and, like and I know jacks and jump rope. Yep. Yeah, and, and I everything. know last year there was a few dripping springs with one of them. I think Kerrville Tyvee was one of them from t me too. That, that they kind of rub you the wrong way. But uh, I, I'm really glad we won this game last night because we've seen them before and um, and it just kind of got under my skin a little bit. So I was a half a camper after last night. Yeah, we all were. <laughs> <laughs> well, and um, and plus I hear we had a little birthday celebration after the game last night too. So. Uh, Cameron Cameron had a birthday yesterday, and it was a good birthday. Yes, present it for was. Her. It was a great birthday. And and might I say that that Cameron played exceptionally well the last few matches. I know, even though it was a loss against Harlan, she played well beyond what I expected her to do. She did really good. Congratulations to her for having a, a, a great last couple of games. Well, thank you. Um, let's see. So the team is pretty close to being 100 percent now. We had uh, Kyla's back. Kyla mm -hmm. Salise is back. Um, is she 100 percent? Is she? I mean, she seemed. She was she's maybe, a little slow. I mean, she's she got was a little rusty to knock the rust off. But yeah. uh, it's it just having her, I guess, at the front net as a presence at mm -hmm. being six two. I think uh, it, it, if anything, it were, it messes with their mind a little bit, knowing that there's someone there at six two. So, just her presence, I think, it helps the team quite a bit. And I know that kind of throws a kink in some of the rotations you have, but it's a good problem to have because she's back, you know, and uh, and you've got a ton of good. Uh, players out there that that um, you can rotate in and out but that it's good to see her back um, looking ahead a little bit uh, we have Floresville on Friday right and Floresville gave that, us fits that, that was a three we won three to two against them last time and 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 I know we don't want to look too far forward because I know we you know we clinched the playoff spot and that, that's reason for celebration but we've got to win the next two in order to secure second place is that right correct? right okay so we want second place because of the district we're going to be or whoever we you know they, we get matched up against we want it so do they is it like uh, one place four two place three two place three mm -hmm. okay so we want to to get second place so we can be scheduled against the number three team is that right, how that's gonna work right right two and three you know eventually you're gonna have to play a one yeah well yeah eventually <laughs> it's probably after the first round you know yes, you'll play it is. one but you know Harlan actually did us a little bit of a favor because if uh, they played Southwest last night. And they they beat Southwest. Otherwise, it'd get kind of messy at second place. Is that right? Right. And we we are the only team to beat them in their gym. I mean, we didn't win the match, but um, we were the only team that's taken a set from them. Two and sets. Yeah, two. <laughs> that's right. So, um, and by the way, um, we had our first two uh, broadcasts for uh, the broadcast network on those two games. Uh, I tell you what, I was excited broadcasting. I know you sat by with me, and I know Jeff helped me a little bit, but. You know, the, those, even though they were losses, those were very exciting games, and that's what, I think that's what people want to see. I mean, it's great entertainment, but we want to come out on top. But uh, it's a lot of fun doing these games. And you guys out there, you, you want to may want to tune in because uh, we're going to, I think, broadcast on the 23rd against Southside. Right, Jeff? We'll be doing that, and we're going to actually follow them into the playoffs. So, um, and what's nice about this versus football is we actually have video. So you'll be able to watch the match. And I know some I, – I, I'll talk to some people that – Maybe not playoffs, okay. And I talked to some, in the, at least for the south side. The, um, you can hook it in your TV. You can get big screen action, you know, because now they got the technology. You can hook your phone into the TV and watch it. And I know some, some people are actually doing that, and we got some text saying that it was, it was fun to watch that. Yeah. 
And, and another question, Coach Grease. When Harlan took the first game relatively easy. Uh-huh. Killed us. Well, yes. Basically. They did. <laughs> but you had a team that I want to say in the past would have just said, you know what, let's go home, take mm -hmm. our three game loss. But you didn't. And one thing that I heard you saying over and over and over again was one point at a time, mm -hmm. one point at a time. Mm -hmm. Go to the next. Go to just go to the next ball. You know that's all you can do. I mean, in a di it, you know as we switch sides, their fans did chant like overrated and other things. So that kind of motive, you know, can motivate you. It was self motivating. Well, it was self motivating. Just watching a couple of their coaches trying to stir up the. the right. I mean, it was a great playoff. Oh, it was. You awesome. know mock-up kind of game you know the, the gym is amazing um and and they did they decided that they weren't going to get embarrassed um we should have beat them in four we had the opportunity we we're three we points away and we just you know lesson learned you know we've we've had a lot of lessons by losing and i feel like as long as we're you know learning something um you know it's all we can do well i mean yeah you lost that set you're just talking about, but you could easily just fold it in the fifth set, and they didn't do that. They, they no. went all the way to the wire, no. and they, they played their hearts out, and they, they tried to win that game because that had a potential district championship, you know, for, for, for that for that match. But um, nonetheless, we got a couple of games coming up. Um, do you take – you got two games coming up, and we know we're going in the playoffs. Do you change anything, or do you, do you take the same thing in the practice? Do you, you, what you have been doing, what well, works now? We are trying, you know, uh, some different rotations. We're trying to tweak a faster offense. Um, obviously, with Kyla back and being the first middle, she's working with right. Cameron, who, you know, Kyla hasn't been set in a while, which makes Maddie work with a different setter, two out of three rotations. So um, setters getting used to hitters. We could run a 6-2. We could run a 5-1. Um, we have a you lot have of options. options. Yeah, now you have a lot of options. You've got a lot of talent on the court. You've got a lot of talent on the bench. I mean, right. you've, got, you've got a strong playoff team that's going to contend, I believe. So, I mean, I'm excited. I know a lot of people are excited. I know Medina Valley Volleyball is back is what I like to say. And, and uh, um, say just in general, there's a ton of excitement for just uh, revolving around volleyball. There's a ton of people in the stands. It's fun to watch. Very fun. So – and I don't want to jump ahead too much, but um, well, let, let's talk about uh, the district standing. So right now, Harlan's in first, Minnie Valley's in second, Southwest is third. So you have Floresville and, and Southside, Southside are tied for fourth, and they're tied for fourth, and we play them once each. So mm -hmm. we're gonna determine, I guess, that fourth spot, the or, help, or, or yeah, or help determine who's gonna have that fourth four right. spot. So they're gonna they're gonna come out at us with a little fire, and, and they're gonna want to beat us because they're they're vying for that fourth spot to be in the playoffs. Right. And and I know that um, we've probably played more matches than anyone. This we played 34 matches so far. So it's been a it's been a grind. Mm -hmm. And I know that probably some of these teams and, and individuals are, are looking forward to the playoffs. So they're going to to get in to, to, to move to the next level. So it's going to be an intense next couple of games. So I welcome all you out there listening to go out there and, and uh, support the, the volleyball program. It's uh, going to leap some bounds here in just weeks. Um, and we play at 5 on Friday. Varsity plays at 5, and then the sub okay, so that will play. It's switching because of homecoming, is mm -hmm. that correct? Right. So the Varsity will be playing at 5 o'clock, so you can come out and watch the Varsity game. So you can come out and watch the, the, the Varsity game at, at 5, and then drift over to the, the – is, is it a home It's a home game, right, for football? Right. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So it is homecoming. That's right. It makes sense, right? Do you – have any idea looking ahead of time who is a couple of the teams or or who you may face we we could play edison highlands or alamo yeah, heights so we'll like right now edison and highlands yeah. both have three losses and alamo heights have four so we will be competing well for the by district from what i can figure we're going to go against district 27 and right now the the jefferson's in first place highlands is in second Alamo Heights, and then Edison is following that, and I think Brack's right on their heels. But um, so Jefferson Highlands, Alamo Heights, and Edison, how we would match up with our district to their district. Is that mm -hmm. how we kind of see yes. it? Yes. And we've had our issues with Jefferson already, so we don't want to play them. 
So, and I know understand Highlands is fairly good too. So we'd love to secure that second spot where we can either be matched up against Alamo Heights or Edison. And I'd love to play at Alamo Heights. I don't know about you guys, but that's just that's one of those rivalry games too that I like to see us go in there and take care of business. Well, when you if you go in on a winning note, it really doesn't matter whether you play Jefferson Highlands, Alamo Heights. Medina Valley can Chipping walk on. Chipping Springs, we'll take them. Medina Valley can walk on <laughs> any court and well, play with anybody. And, and, you know, if you got a business out there or something and if you want to help support the volleyball team and, and advertise with us, we're, we're, we're looking for advertisement sponsors so we can broadcast these games. So uh, g- give Jeff a shout out there if, if you're interested in doing that. Um, so we'll go ahead and oh, – you want to go straight to him? Okay. So we've got um, – <laughs> Astros are playing tonight, so we may be rushing through this a little bit. <laughs> so we got a couple of volleyball players here. Um, we have uh, number 11, Haley Mitchell, and we have number 14, Sierra Nair. Um, Sierra. Yes. What grade are you in? I'm a junior. You're a junior. And your position? Uh, I play DS. Defensive, Defensive specialist. Defensive specialist, What yeah. is your job? We're trying to educate some of these people so, uh, out there what you guys do. So what does a defensive specialist do? We pick up any ball that pretty much comes like to us in the back row, and we help out with tips, and we we pretty much just secure the back row. So your your one of your main jobs is to probably receive the serves. Is that correct? And yes. some of those, they they come and pretty fast. They so that's come. A, some come in ridiculous spins and just crazy floats, and sometimes they are hard to pick up. But once you get um, once you get to know who the server is, then you start picking up her game. Well, and I've seen different kinds of serves. I've seen one some with a lot of spin that goes sideways, almost like a curveball. We've yes. seen floaters that look like a knuckleball that come in, and then you just see some that come. They're just they get there quick. Yeah. And if you don't if you don't get in position, it's going to hit you probably somewhere you don't want to get hit. So um, some of these girls serve really hard. So you're a defensive specialist. Yes. Um, what what is what do you, we're going in the playoffs, right? So there's yes. got to be some excitement going on. I mean, yes, there and, is. And, and and to be your first year on the varsity and to be jumping in the playoffs, something that hasn't been done in a few years. So explain, tell me a little bit about your excitement. Uh, it's kind of just it's nerve wracking mostly because I don't like I don't know what to expect. Like there's gonna it's gonna be crazy. It's probably not gonna be something that we're used to, but I know that our team is gonna be able to handle it and be able to. Um, Run a good offense and defense, and we're gonna we're gonna secure that spot. What other um or that win? Sorry. What other activities do you do, Sierra? In school or in sports? In, in, in either in school, sports. Um, do you I'm play in any other sports. No, I only okay. play volleyball. You know, but you do year round, is that correct? Yes. Yes, you I do play club, club as well. That's right. Um, any, any other activities or organizations that you're part of? I'm in NHS. And oh wow, good. Um, that's pretty much it because I spend a lot of my time doing volleyball, but I'm hoping to be able to do more as in my senior year and I, I, help out a lot. I know you have a lot of support at home. They come out and watch yes, whether I you're do. on the court or not. Your parents are there always. So kudos to your parents. They're, they're good people. And, um, and with that, we'll give. Well, I'm going to ask her oh, go ahead. one question. Oh, go ahead. You had said that the playoffs are going to be a, a new experience. Yes. Not really because if you're not, comp- if you're not ready for it after that Harlan series, you're not going to be ready because that, to me, showed that y'all can step on the court with any team in the state and give them a run for their money, especially when you fall behind in that first game. At, you know, and, and I'm saying humiliated because, you know, I, I saw a lot of heads hanging down, but, but once y'all regrouped and came out in that second game and took game two and three, there was a lot of heads hanging on the other side. Y'all put them in a position where they hadn't been all year. You beat them two games or two sets in their own home gym. Yes. So that should build up with a lot of confidence knowing that there's nobody in the state of Texas that can step on the court where y'all can't beat. You know, and and, I'm, and they weren't expecting that, and, and their coach does not show a lot of emotion, the Harlan coach. And she got a little feisty, so oh, they, yeah. they, they, they knew that we were there for a fight. And they – Got a fight handed yeah, they to did. Them. They sure did. Okay, Haley, what um, what grade are you in, Haley? Uh, I'm a junior. You're a junior. In your position, Haley? Uh, I'm a right side hitter. A right side hitter. So what does a right side hitter do? Obviously uh, being on the right side. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're in the front row, and we normally take the outside hit, which is the strongest hitter out up front. 
And we normally take their cross because not many girls can hit line, but when they do, we take that also. So typically the hitters take a, the set from the setters, mm -hmm. and they set it up for you so you can, you can hit and hopefully get a kill shot out of it, correct? Yes, so sir. So that you're an outside hitter, and, all, and, and what I've seen from you, you're an excellent blocker. So um, you're also at the net trying to block, and, you've, you've, and I think you enjoy blocking, don't you? Yeah, it's really nice when you, like, stuff a ball down in a girl's face. And what's the little... <laughs> Oh, what's the, the little saying after you block? You oh. can do <laughs> hey, I girls, like that. Girls have a lot of fun I up like there, that. I'm, I'm telling you. So tell us uh, about your excitement, too. You've got to have some excitement. And you're one of them that probably don't show a whole lot of emotion, but you've got to be inside. It's got to be getting to you. The, the playoffs are just, you know, at the front door. It's really good when we play teams that we have rivalries against. Right. Because... It builds up a lot of emotion in the gym. We, there's certain players that are very cocky that you just kind of want to make them feel bad on the other side of the net. So <laughs> that builds up And you it know who me. they are by now. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and, and because you know because you all been playing forever together. I mean, since August 7th, I think, was the start date when you all had y'all's first game. So you all are kind of like a, almost a fraternity of sisters. I mean, by this time, either – you. You're just going to be just like sisters, I would imagine. You're going to be at each other's throats, but you love each other to death. Is that correct? Uh, yes, we actually do get at each other on the court sometimes, <laughs> especially when we're mad. But after we come off the court, it's back Th And that's what I've seen. Y'all play really well together, and y'all are, are just a big sisterhood out there, and, and it's great to see that. Oh, I, I, and there's no more you have to say than you go back to last Tuesday. It, the, the, you know, I left there amazed at how the girls – stepped up you know there was a couple of them that said get on my back we're gonna go and we're gonna win this thing and unfortunately it didn't happen but you saw a lot of frustration as you mentioned there were some the, long rallies oh yeah there was some really long rallies and we were on the good end of the stick of those which was a good thing because typically you know you know it's been known that we don't play good defense according to Uvalde but um we yeah, have y'all beat six sets to the zero Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and see, you walk into that gym, and it's just like walking into that stadium. It doesn't matter what happens in that town. It's like the twilight zone. I don't care what sport it is. And, and in volleyball, it's even worse because they play that music so damn loud that it drives you crazy <laughs> in that gym. I'm sorry. But... I can't. I don't like that place. Yeah. Well, they're behind us now. At least in the volleyball. I know we got uh, football coming up this week, but at least that part of us behind us. So, um, what other sports do you play, or activities do you have in school? Uh, I don't do any other sports in school, but I also do play. Yeah, club you club year round school. also, don't you? Yes. And that's getting ready to start up pretty quick. As soon as this is over, you guys are back on the court. November first. Yes, so our season starts pretty soon. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, if you don't have any more questions, I'd like to thank you guys for, for coming out. And um, I just want to say, um, do we need to stall a little bit? No, no. Uh, we are. We had an important day yesterday with a birthday, and we have another important day tomorrow. Uh, Coach Griggs is having a birthday, and we're going to present her. Sammy's is going to present Coach Griggs with a birthday cake, so she'll be able to take it home and share with her two lovely daughters at home and her wonderful husband and sounds good. Thank you. You take some dessert home. Uh, an early, <laughs> an early happy birthday, and well, I want to let everybody know out there to please blow up her phone tomorrow and wish <laughs> her happy birthday. Uh, she is turning twenty six. Yep. <laughs> and, and and if you don't see her tomorrow, see her on Friday because we'll be at the gym uh, playing Floresville at five p.m. So, Coach Griggs. Happy birthday. Thank you. Early birthday. Uh, you'll receive my text tomorrow morning, All as right. always. <laughs> Sounds good. good so, luck, well, good. no, we, we're going to just, we want to bring the candle. We want to make sure that she can blow out One. all 26 candles. And here, Jeff, so. Jeff's going to snap a picture. That way you can see this on our Facebook or Twitter account. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I don't, think, I don't think we'll sing happy birthday, or will we? No. We'll uh, just let her load. I didn't we think We couldn't so. carry a tune yeah. if it was in a bucket. Ma'am. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And the candle has been blown out. <laughs> and with awesome. That, and with that, we'll say good night to the volleyball girls. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll take a break. And 
Sports for Supper will be back shortly after these messages. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley. You're watching broadcast. Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Nobody can design, create, or maintain your lawn better than 3D Landscaping and Irrigation. With over 17 years of experience, owner Ray Doyan and his crew take pride in their craftsmanship and service. They're fully insured, offer free estimates, and multiple references, so you know you're getting the best. 3D does landscaping, lawn maintenance, irrigation, tree installation, lighting, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial, 3D Landscaping and Irrigation has you covered. Give 3D a call at 830-985-9115 or find us online at threedlandscaping.com. Medina Valley Pediatrics is the only pediatric clinic in Medina Valley for kids from birth to 21. From sick to well care, ADHD treatment, sports physicals and immunizations, same day appointments and 24 hours a day by phone for after hours emergencies. Most major commercial insurances and Medicaid accepted. Medina Valley Pediatrics, 1028 Country Lane in Castroville. Call 830-355-2732. MV-Pediatrics.com. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery. Two legendary landmarks in Castorville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castorville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Havy's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at sammysrestaurant.com. Havy's Alsatian Bakery, online at havysbakery.com. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Francisco Garza. Francisco, Francisco, okay. Welcome back here to Sammy's Restaurant. Well, we finished with our coaches segments and player segments, and now we're going to move into our community corner, and we are going to have Mr. Uh, Francisco Garza on here and i'm also going to turn it over to Dwayne because Dwayne, that's your father correct yes it is it's my father and, and we want to kind of tie this all together because a lot we want on the far as community corner goes we've talked we've talked to uh, mr grove with the st louis comets and we've talked to mr mangle with the lacoste eagles and now we're going to get the castorville wildcat perspective of all this and, and it kind of ties all this in how medina valley came to be how, how all the schools got together and became one school so, in, in being that, um, I want to introduce my dad. Dad, um, everything going okay today? Pretty good. Let me start out with this. Let, let's uh, tell all these people, how old are you? Come December, if I make it, it'll be 81. Okay, be 81 years old. Um, so um, He'll make it. Yeah, he'll I make it. So. He'll make <laughs> it. He's, he's doing strong. And I'm going to ask these guys sitting next to me because it's kind of a... Uh, uncomfortable interviewing your dad you know when you could just sit and be talking at home so i'm going to try to make this as professional as i can so um and and, and instead of saying mr garza i'm going to say dad right off the bat so dad um you are second generation castrovillian is that correct castrovillian yes yes yeah, so you're second generation so that makes my son garrison a fourth generation so as far as the garzas we've been here the uh, garrison who is a junior in high school he, he is a fourth generation uh, wait a minute my dad was a Castrovillian. That's what I mean. So you're second generation, yeah, I'm and then I'm third, <laughs> and Garrison's fourth. So uh, we've been around just as long as some of these other uh, people have been around in Castroville. What was your dad's name? Juan. Juan. Yeah. So uh, you went to high school here, obviously, and that's what we're, we're here about. What, what years did you attend high school here? Uh, your first your freshman year, what year was that? Uh, 1953. So you were 1953 to 19, you graduated in 57? 57, right. Through 57. Um, so in the late, in the 50s, where was the high school located? High school? Right there where the elementary school is at now. So where the elementary school, there was a high school. Are any of those buildings still there, or is it just the same I, location? I, uh, part of the old high school is there. That was probably what was the old cafeteria, probably where we went, uh, the grade school part, elementary. Were I you think I think with your elementary where you went to elementary. Yeah, the, the part of that was still there. And I believe that's where the old uh, where we. I think it's a library now, but that was part of the old high school. Um, I don't know if the ag building still part of it there or not. Some of those old structures are part of probably still there. Yeah. Um, but 
so that was your high school, but I'm going to go back a couple years. Grade school was where? At what city hall now? So where the city halls now were is where you was was it grades one through? When I first went there, it was one through eight. First through eighth grade, and then after that, ninth through was that was that where the elementary is now, no, right? No. They went to Lacoste. Oh, they went to Lacoste. Yeah, we had no high school then. Oh, okay. Just uh, St. Louis, but not, not Casterville. So when did Casterville start? Uh, I'm thinking it was 1952. Okay, I thought it was back before then. So no. 1952 was the Either first year. Either 1952 or 1951. Yeah. Okay, so you were one of the first ones to go to Casterville High School. Uh, probably third class or second class. I mean. So where City Hall is now, was that always City Hall or was that the school first or were we all using the building both? It was, uh, no, it was just school. It was just a school, then it turned into City Hall. Right. So that was originally the grade school. Yeah. How, yeah. how many were you in, in your graduating class? Thirteen. <laughs> Big class of thirteen, huh? Yes. So, um, okay, so after high school, what was what, what did you do after high school? I think ten days after school I graduated, I went to uh, the Air Force. Okay, so, you know, and that's kind of been the common theme. Yep. You know, that we've, we've talked about all these old timers is, so, Mr. Grof and Mangle were both in the Army, is that correct? Yes. So we have an Air Force veteran now. And, and from what, I guess, a lot of them did that. Uh, it, was, it was shortly after World War II, did, I, I mean, a lot of them joined the service after that. It was I think from my class, I was the only one. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. From uh, Casterville, I don't know from uh, St. Louis. Do you know, know how many were in your in your class there? Thirteen. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. And I think it was five boys and the rest were or five girls and seven boys. I think. Wow. So and so you all you, you also did your duty for the in in the service, but you know you had some some duties here also in Casterville. Um, you were part of the city council. I served city council for six years. For six years, and that was in the 70s, is that correct? 70s, right. Okay, yeah. so you were part of and you were actually, at one point, you were mayor pro tem? Yes. For the city? Right. And you, you also did some coaching youth baseball, so you were out the fields, uh, just like some of the right. other guys, doing some coaching and helping out out there. And um, Maury wants to talk about your business a little bit. <laughs> yeah, how, how did the barbecue business come about? Uh, actually, I started out selling minnows. Not uh, vegetables, vegetables, and they didn't go so good. So I got into the mineral mineral business at the same time, and that did all right. But then we decided to go into barbecuing, and that really picked up. That uh, we did real good barbecuing. So for you guys that don't know, there right across the street from Jukes Meat Market, there's an old building there that uh, Dad rented from uh, Mr. Adams, who lived next door. Uh, which is an antique shop right now, but he started a business while he was uh, doing his real job as a civil servant for the uh, over at Kelly Air Force Base, and uh, he started a little business selling produce and, and then added bait, and then after the bait, uh, he added barbecues. It was just a hodgepodge of... Was it, was it called Pete's Yes, basic? it was. I, rem was. I remember going afterwards. there as a kid afterwards. with my afterwards. dad. My that was your brother. That was your brother-in-law. Brother brother okay. Law. It started out, actually, that place was Bob's Meat Market before me. Okay. Yes. Uh, and uh, I don't know. You should push your heart? Yes. Yeah. Grandpa you was my grandpa. Well, I think he was your grandpa or something like that. Bob? Mm, my grandpa was Ati. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, he might have been related to you. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> Probably all so. Of us in are related yeah. Somehow down so they down the did that a number <laughs> of years, and they and it it evolved into Pete's barbecue and bait stand. So that that's kind of how that started. But but he he's he's right though. We went there to buy minnows to go fishing because that, you know, when we were growing up, there wasn't no internet. There was nothing. We would go to Kenny Park or, well, and, or, and or the Hogue's River Bottom or and Bull lures. Bottom fishing and lures were not a big thing. You bought you bought life and you bought live bait, and, and that's what we did. Yeah. yeah, we didn't we didn't have you know we didn't have the money to buy them, and you could go there and you could you could get your minnows. You could go and you could get your soda water. And, and half a pound of brisket and take off. No, the the, bar, the, yep. the sausage sandwiches were yeah. yeah. unbelievable. See, I, I don't remember it when y'all when then, but I remember going there as a kid. And then we'd come see you at the service station right afterwards. Yeah, me excellent. and my dad yeah. would. We'd do that all well, the time. Well, we had uh, lures also. Yeah, y'all oh, yeah. Lures yeah. and uh, worms, and uh, we sold beer, we sold little everything there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the sign outside said live, live bait. Yeah, yeah. live bait. Said, and there were always fresh minnows. Who, who, who did y'all buy the minnows from? A guy from Bandera. 
Heim, Heimann, I think was named Heim, something like that. It's been so long. And he got him from Rockwall, Texas, I think. And he made his rounds all over South Texas, Central yeah. Texas, selling, uh, selling minerals in bulk mm -hmm. to these guys. Tell you, tell you a little story, Mr. Garza. When I was a little kid, I did not live here. But we would drive through Castroville every, like once a month going to our ranch. We had a ranch in Utopia, Texas. We, we'd drive through here. We always stopped at the bait, bait stand. We always got half a pound of brisket, bread, and uh, stopped up on the hill at the at picnic the table. Roadside Park. And, and Roadside Park, and we'd stop there and eat lunch. That's where <laughs> wow. we'd eat lunch before I ever moved here. Small well, world then, huh? That's, that was one of the reasons that we ended up moving here was the Pete's Bait Stand. Is that right? And yeah, because we were like, you know, it was always comfortable uh, whenever we, my dad would go into the bait stand, he, he really liked, I, I'm sure you were there and, and Pete, and uh, he enjoyed it all. And when the decision was made by him and his brother to move, this is one of the places, this is where we chose to move. And part of it is because of the bait stand. <laughs> That's well, funny. I actually started a business. And then I got Pete into as a partner. And then I sold out to him. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's how that evolved. So we, that would, we would always get the, the half pound of brisket. We'd have to get a link of the sausage. sausage. Barbecue so and, and I don't know if you can give it away, but the barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. I don't know where. It was a gravy. It. My Aunt Tina did it. She oh, was the one that, that made the was, sauce. That was delicious. Yep. Well, let's, let's move on a little bit. And while, while uh, old Mr. Garza Dad is here, we want to talk a little bit about the Casterville Wildcats. Wildcats. So that, that, that's the piece of the puzzle that's been missing out of this whole community it's corner that we've said. That's right. Yep. So the mascot was the Wildcats. And what were the colors, Dad? What were the school colors? Purple and gold. Purple and gold. And my dad's wearing his letterman's jacket right now. <laughs> asked him, I asked him, <laughs> I said, does it, does, it, does, it, does it still fit? And he goes, well, four I think so. Letterman. So he was a, he's got four stripes on his big C that's on, on, the, on the front of his jacket, which means he was a four-year letterman. Now, back then... And we asked uh, Mr. Grove and Mr. Mangle. They gave a Letterman's jacket every year. Did y'all yes. get the same? So yes. you you have do you still have all your Letterman's jackets? I've got two. You got two left, huh? Yeah. But they gave one out every year when and uh, that you earned one. So a four-year Letterman played with you when you were a freshman. So um, so we got your colors, purple and gold. Um, so we know where the school was. Where was the football field? Where did you play games at? Uh, right where it's uh, it was called Lions Field, and it's uh that. What did, what did they play there? They do like soccer now there probably. Well, uh, across soccer. the street from the from the school. Yeah, across it. That's where the football field was at. You know. Were there lights on the field? Yes. There was lights on That's the field. The same ones. Yeah. They, they yeah. Did y'all share that field with someone? It was St. Louis. St. Yeah. Louis played on the same field yeah. too because Mr. Grove was talking the same thing. Yeah. And the and the baseball field. Where was that located? Baseball field was that where, right there where the, what you call it now they play soccer right yeah, there. Yeah, the highway ninety. Highway 9 yeah, right Caddy okay. Corner to Gray Hands' yeah. place, okay. so right? Yeah. yeah. And did y'all share that field too? Yes. Y'all did share the field with, with St. Louis. Mm -hmm. What um what sports did you play, Dad? I played uh, four years football, two years basketball, four years baseball. The four years of baseball and two years of basketball. Where did y'all play the basketball games at? At Lacoste. Lacoste. <laughs> did y'all really play yeah, Lacoste? Our home games, yeah. Our the home old gym, probably. Yeah. 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 Oh, the only, yeah. What, what what was your position in football? Uh, mostly, I played back. back. Running back. What, what, what? Well, I, but first year we had what they called a single wing. I don't know if anybody knows. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. Off balance single wing. How many and times y'all throw it a game? Hell, it's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not many. Not many. Anyway, uh, I played blocking back. That wasn't a position the, my yeah. first two years. Who did you block for? For the fullback and the running back, I mean the tailback. Who was it? Uh, our tailback, uh, Nelson Bippert. Oh, that's Monty yeah. Bippert's dad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's Monty Tommy Bippert's brother. Tommy's brother, yes. Uh, uh, he, he passed away, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, very young. He passed Years away ago. at a young age. Yes. Uh, yes. He, w he was probably the, the best player that I have played with. In yeah. fact, I know he was. And he was the best friend uh, a guy could have. He was a nice, very, very nice person, and the rest of us would not, but he was. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a gentleman. Yes. So you were a, a blocking back in football. What did you play in baseball? <laughs> Wherever they need me to accept uh, pitching in uh, first base, uh, and uh, I was on the team. I wasn't a starter. I mean, I, I wasn't very good. I wasn't good at all, but I, I was on the team. So did, did – um. 
Did any 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 of y'all teams make the playoffs that you were on? Never. Never. <laughs> 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 what so what what was a uh, what was a typical schedule like? Uh, what teams did y'all play back then? Uh, Lacoste, Natalia, Bandera, Sevenal, Dilly, uh, Comfort. Some years we didn't play some of this team, you know. So y'all had some, y'all had some travel. Oh yeah, and Sevenal, I wish, and uh, Brackettville. Y'all didn't yeah. y'all didn't play St. Louis ever. No, you no. didn't. No, they would have killed us. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the coach? Uh, my my first three years were uh, coach uh, Cook was Charlie Cook. Charlie Cook. Yeah. He, Did he all, was he also the bus driver? Did y'all have a bus that y'all take or did y'all have to We had a bus. You had a bus. It's cool bus. Yeah, we had a no. He didn't drive. We had a. They would one of the drivers would drive us to the games. The oh. players didn't drive. <laughs> I've heard that's happened. They probably I only some St. Yeah. Louis players We're, drove the bus oh, really? a few times. I've heard the stories of well, that. My, my so. senior year, I probably could have driven it. <laughs> <laughs> so, give us an ex- uh, your most memorable game, whether it be baseball or football. What what's always stuck out in your mind that you've always said, "Man, that was a good game." Uh, a good game probably was one year we played Dilly here. And I'd like to, like I said, we weren't very good at all. And they were supposed to beat us bad. And uh, I didn't hear this, but I had a cousin who was outside, and this guy would come by and say, boy, they're small, and we're going to beat the you-know-what out of them. Well, we, we beat them, 14-13. That was the best game of, of uh, Who my was the kicker that made well, Did y'all have point? a kicker? No, no, they missed the extra point. What, y'all had to make, too? Uh, oh, the kicker? Uh, Y'all were kicking extra points then, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was either. Uh, it was either. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Nelson. I was going to say it probably was Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, he probably didn't it. was Nelson. It was a, a guy by the name of Marlon Stein. You know Marlon Stein, Maury? Probably not, huh? Did you know Jarvis, Jarvis and Malcolm Stein? Yeah. They, uh, all three were brothers. They, they, they played in the same team. You know, they were all big, and, and they were uh, the linemen. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, Malcolm was uh, the end. Yeah. Could never catch a ball. Not Malcolm. Uh, <laughs> Marlon. Marlon Ray. <laughs> Marlon Ray. That's great. Could never catch the ball. <laughs> he was. Why y'all never he, 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 much. he was. So uh, he was. I think about six six or something like that. And couldn't catch. Did he play basketball? Yeah. Oh. Uh course you same, know, same thing what what i just realized i didn't know the window for castro was so small for the high school so we're talking 1952 to 1960 something right when 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 it became medina valley 1960 i think is what they said last time we met with one of these old timers 61 or 62. 61 so i mean that that window no, was tiny it was 59 wasn't it i think they said 60 last time but anyway that, it's close enough it's around there, so that yeah. window was a little bitty that the castro wildcats actually existed five years Six years. Well, 1952 yeah. to 1960, so that's eight years. So eight years. Yeah, More or less, yeah. Yeah, so wow. I, I didn't realize that. So that's, I mean, that's great information, and that's kind of why we're willing to do this and get some of these guys in. They, it, what, 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 where did they go to school before that, before the, the, the with, before 52? The high school? Yeah. They went to La Costa. Yeah, they did go to La Costa. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, you said that earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, any, any of your team, well, I mean, in that Five or, or that eight-year span, do you recall any of the Castro Wildcats playing any college sports that you know of? I I, I don't think none of it. Uh, maybe Nelson Bibbard. Uh, I think he went to UT, but yeah, whether he, he played, Texas. whether he played there baseball or not, I don't know. But that was a sport. Was baseball? Well, he was all around, but uh, he was a sm- little small to play football. I think you know. You know, and, and this is something that I, we failed to ask the other guys that were here talking about the, the, uh, the, their experience in the, in the 50s uh, going to school at St. Louis and, and Lacoste. What sports did the girls play? Do you even know? <laughs> in high school, they did play base, uh, uh, basketball. They had basketball on track, probably? Basketball that played on both sides of the court. Yes. Uh-huh. They had a rover right. back and forth. No, they had a, a like an offense and defense. Right, three and three. Yeah. Three and yeah. three, and they, and they, could, they couldn't they cross the line. Yeah. They couldn't. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they ran track, probably right. I don't remember much about them. Uh, but basketball was probably the big sport for girls. 
Yeah, I don't remember if they played baseball or not, you know. They probably didn't have softball back then. No. No. I don't think so, you know, but baseball. So you played four years of football, two baseball? Two basketball. And two basketball? And four baseball. What did you play in basketball? What position? Some kind of guard. <laughs> how, well, many, how many? What was your? How many points? I think in my two. Most in any game. I think the most uh, in my two years, the most points I made uh, was maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this: in, in your senior year of football, you walk out in the field, and you know you're a big time, big shot senior. What what was your size as a senior? Uh, same size I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Letterman's jacket fits. The Letterman's yeah. jacket still fits on. So I, think, I think I weighed about uh, 137 pounds. And when did you meet your wife? Uh, I think it was 1961. She graduated from? No, she's not from here. Not from here. Uh -huh. How did you meet her? At a dance. Where at? Hello, it is. Oh, I was oh. going to say Queehee. Yeah, there, there was dances. That's <laughs> one thing that I've heard stories about. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't allowed to go to Queehee? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so that's one thing where a lot of them met. There was the, uh, back then, uh, you know, that because there were so many bases and stuff, they had uh, service bases, you know, that they had dances everywhere. I mean, they, there was dances and, uh, I mean, all uh, over the place. Yeah, except Castroville for, you know, Mexican dances. Here you had to travel in order to. Yeah, uh -huh. We did have a few dances here at the, uh, at the hall once in a while, but not many. Weddings or things like that. You know, and, and, you, and you said Mexican dances, and Maury and I talked about it a while back ago. What what percentage of the Castorville High School w was Hispanic? Was it, w I mean, that's predominantly where the Hispanics went to school because they, I mean, bottom line is they couldn't afford to go to hmm. St. Louis. Uh, not very much. I would say maybe 20%. They, they didn't go to high school. I was going to say, a lot of them probably didn't go to high school. No, they didn't go to high school. I mean, it a lot of them had very, to work. Very few made it to high school or even the eighth grade, you know. So. And that, that's, what, that's what probably hurts because a lot of these... A lot of these kids back then were probably really great athletes. But that's they, why they, you didn't have a, much of a team. That's why... They had to work. They, yeah. they, were, they, they, they were, couldn't they finish school. There were some school. real good athletes, but they didn't go to school, you know. Yeah. It's basically baseball, you know. And, and you know, the, the Hispanic community had to support the farmers. They had to support, you know, whatever else that was going around and to support the families. But, uh, you know, it was a tough time back then for them. And that's why you don't hear a lot about what, what happened back then. And, with the Hispanic community around this area because, you know, they were, they just, they couldn't do it. They had to work. I mean, school wasn't even probably an option no, that was for a, a bunch of them. That's right. And no. very, very, very few of us could make it, you know, that it was, just couldn't learn, you know. Well, it, 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 uh, from we what were, I can we understand. Had, we couldn't, none of us could speak English. I was say, I was say the, the language barrier. Yeah, because you had to, you, have yeah, back then. you had yeah. to try to learn English, you yeah. know, before you could even have good grades. You had to try to learn English and then, much less to try to do any kind of sport and, and still get by, you know, and then you had to leave practice to go to your job or whatever needed to happen, you know. So, I mean, it was it was a tough deal back then. You know, and that, that's what frustrates me to this day. You know, my grandma, she, she could speak four languages. Mm -hmm. She could speak English, Spanish, German, and Alsatian. And that was a plus for her because she was in the – she worked at the grocery store and, and everything like that. Then you have the, the Hispanic community that, you know, people always say, well, they talk funny. Well, you know what? They're, they're bilingual. I can't talk Spanish, but they could talk English. You know, and it, it was one of those barriers to where, you, you know, yeah. until you crossed it, you didn't understand That's right. how hard it was for them to just go to school and learn because there wasn't, was any of your teachers Hispanics or were they? No, no, none of them were. But you know there were some Mexican people, men, and a few women that could speak El I can believe that. Yeah, I that. can believe that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In the community. At that yeah. time, at that time, at you that know. Time. Well, yeah. when you're when you're around more people that speak it like that, it's like me. I, I picked it up as a kid. You know, yeah. I can understand it. I don't speak it, but I can understand it. When you're around it, you start to pick up on right. things like yeah. that. <clears throat> All right. Um, I mean, we're we're getting short on time, and I want to thank Dad for coming out, and and yeah. I learned a couple of things today, and and that kind of ties everything together. And I'm glad we, we were able to get the Castorville Wildcat part of the story. And and I I'm like you, I did not know it was that short. 
I didn't yeah, either. I, I didn't realize it was only a nine, eight, nine year that. window. That's why you don't hear. You hear a lot of stories about the St. Louis and a lot of stories about Lacoste. Yeah. You don't hear many stories about Casterville. And that's because it, it, it wasn't there. That window was so short. And I know that the generation in front of us understood that. But from, from my generation down, that they had no idea. I didn't have any idea. You know, I, I, you put some things together. I told Maury this a while ago. It, he mentioned that the grade school and stuff was at the city hall now. The fire escape's in the back of that building. And it makes sense why that's, that's there school. now. Because you drive by it and you're like, why is that there? On the city hall building, school. yeah, and now you, like you put those things together, and it's like now I understand why that's part of that building, you know. Well, all right, um, you all have any more questions? We'll release this young man to go back where he came from. <laughs> I want to thank you for stopping by and, and sharing it because there was ninety percent of it that I did not know, and I've lived in Castleville yeah. my entire life and did not realize that. Yep. Well. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Garza. Yeah, Appreciate thank you for being here. We really it's do pleasure appreciate being it. Here. Thank you. Okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll we'll come back and talk some sports for you. You're listening to our sports show here at Sammy's, and we'll continue in just a moment. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Nobody can design, create, or maintain your lawn better than 3D Landscaping and Irrigation. With over 17 years of experience, owner Ray Doyan and his crew take pride in their craftsmanship and service. They're fully insured, offer free estimates, and multiple references, so you know you're getting the best. 3D does landscaping, lawn maintenance, irrigation, tree installation, lighting, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial, 3D Landscaping and Irrigation has you covered. Give 3D a call at 830-985-9115 or find us online at threedlandscaping.com. Medina Valley Pediatrics is the only pediatric clinic in Medina Valley for kids from birth to 21. From sick to well care, ADHD treatment, sports physicals, and immunizations, same-day appointments, and 24 hours a day by phone for after-hours emergencies. Most major commercial insurances and Medicaid accepted. Medina Valley Pediatrics, 1028 Country Lane in Castroville. Call 830-355-2732, mv-pediatrics.com. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery, two legendary landmarks in Castroville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castroville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Habe's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at sammysrestaurant.com. Habe's Alsatian Bakery, online at habesbakery.com. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Sammy's. And before we get going into the rest of the show, I think Dwayne's got some updates for you from some of the other Medina Valley sports, cross country and, and things like that. Yeah, I, I know we're running a little bit of short on time. That kind of the, This other stuff has gone a little bit long. But just a couple of quick updates. Because I don't want to leave these guys out. We've had them here before when we talked to them and stuff. So and, and they deserve the recognition they've gotten. And I want to start out with with cross country. Coach Bermea's teams have done really really well. Um, a couple of notes I have here is that they they swept district. So our cross country teams did really great job. They took team titles in varsity boys, varsity girls, JV boys, JV girls, freshman boys, and freshman girls. So they 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 swept. They swept across the board for uh, uh, district titles in cross country. And um, also when the freshman boys took the two mile, the freshman girls took the two mile. And from, uh, my notes also say here that 61, 61 Panthers, 61 student athletes participated in cross country all across all divisions this year. So that, that's a huge, yes, huge wow. amount of student and athletes really running cross country from Nina Valley. And one of the winners was one of the young ladies that... That's right. That Macy Livingston brought home the gold medal with a time of 1828, beating the second place team by a minute and 15 seconds. Wow. Is that her best? I, I, I'm that not sure if it's her best, but I that's an remember. awesome she time. She told us her best when she was on the show, and I can't remember what it was. It was, was just at 20 minutes. So she's really? done really well since yeah. then. Oh, wow. So she's done really well. Um, Clara Royos and, and Michaela Chafin, which was here also, they both finished in the top 10 to help to win the district title. And, and Uvalde took second place. So we beat Uvalde, which hopefully is a premonition about what's coming up this week, right? So the girls with, with Macy and, and Clara and Michaela did great running for the Panthers, along with all the rest of them that had a great season so far. 
And the, on the boy side of it, uh, Jason Hinojosa Ramirez and Joshua Sandoval finished second and third in the boys to help win that team title. Seth Hernandez finished 10th. So the, they won district, and they won district uh, over Eagle Pass win, which took second place. So both teams, uh, boys and girls, will be running in the Region 4 championships this Monday at Texas A&M um, University in Corpus Christi. So they've got a big, um, a big Region 4 championship meet this coming now, this Monday. I think one of them has stated that they've ran that course before. Is that correct? I believe they, that they, they, they had a meet there already. Yes. Okay. They've had one or, or two yeah. meets possibly They, they already. did mention that when yeah. they were so here. So that's something positive knowing that they've been there and know what that's how right. the course is going to be set up. Well, yeah, and, and I mean, that's it's a big deal when you run to know what you're running because you know where you want to expend your energy and where not to. Yeah. So, um, you know, I want to congratulate Coach Bermea for one coming to the show and, and, and give us a heads up of what's going on. And I want to congratulate all the runners for the cross country team for, for winning district. Um, and then uh, moving along to coach Reinhardt's team with a tennis team. Um, they actually concluded their season today. Okay. They, um, they lost to, um, I believe it was, is it Alamo Heights that they lost? No, God, my notes are failing me right now. Uh, but the, the, they lost by district today. Um, I, I know their, their meet was previously, and it get, got getting, kept getting pushed because of the weather. And, um, yeah, they lost against Alamo Heights. And I can see that happening because Alamo Heights has a pretty good tradition in the tennis program. A lot of those, you know, they were fortunate enough to have a little bit more yep. money. And, country and, clubs, and country clubs, yep. and, and get associated to that sport, which and an opportunity to play year golf, round. Yeah, tennis and golf are not a a cheap person sport if you have to buy your own equipment. That's not that's not wrong. You're and, exactly and, right. You know, it, it's not a disgrace to lose. No, to a team. And like I Alabama. think they had an outstanding season and, this and year. And well, you mentioned this was the team, and this is team yeah, turn. So the individual part comes after Christmas spring, break. That's right. right? So, you know, and the last time we talked to them was back in September, and I know since then they had a clean sweep against Southwest Legacy. And, and I have a list of everyone who won, but everybody won, either their, their singles or doubles or, you know, whatever it had, and there's too many lists. But, I mean, and they just blew them out. Most of the, most of the, uh, the, the, the matches were 6-0 wins. So they had a clean sweep against Southwest Legacy, and then they followed that up. On, that was a Thursday, and they followed that with a Saturday. They beat Eagle Pass win. Um, they did have a loss to Harlan after that, and I'm sure Harlan's got a good program, kind of like we were doing volleyball. they got a good program this year, too. But, um, you know, so, so they're, they're – Boys and girls, student athletes in the tennis program, and the good thing about it is we'll get to hear about them again in the springtime when they do the individual competition. So, congratulations to you guys, and good luck in the upcoming in the spring. So, with that, I don't know if you guys want to move on or take yeah, a break. Um, yeah, well, we won't take a break, but we've got, you know, Mari and I. The last two weeks we haven't had a show here because of the JV game get moved up, and you know, then we had the bye week mixed in there. Um, so, Medina Valley football coming off of win against Bernie Champion 35-34. They're coming off a win against Kennedy 42 to 7 after the bye week. We got homecoming this week, so it's been a good couple of weeks for Panther football. They're 3 and 0 in district play. Uh, they're coming into Uvalde, which you know, it's it's no slouch, but at the same time it's one of the weaker teams in the district. And looking at this week and next week, these ought to be two good games for Medina Valley where they can work on some things like we saw against Kennedy and get tuned up for Alamo Heights and Kerrville And You know, Jared, and I think at this point, I think they're peaking. Healthy. Yeah, They're peaking right now, which is a great time to peak. And, and I, I want to caution you guys. The Ker Kerrville tie, the Uvalde game, Uvalde did score That's right. 28 no, I know. points or something like that against Kerrville Tyvee. So don't ever... 
Well, underestimate your opponent. And these guys know, that's how I was talking to Mr. Villafane er, um, earlier and, and Spencer, um, that grade level has played Eagle, I mean, uh, Uvalde before. I and mean, then they went head to head with their seventh and eighth grade year, so they know what they're to expect. And those are, t I, know, I know it's still junior high, but those are tough games. So at least the, the, that class knows what to expect with Uvalde. And I don't, I don't think they'll take them lightly. Well, and when we make our predictions, we'll just see what everybody predicts and just how close we think it's going to be. Yeah, I, I agree. Because I, I know, I know they can put up points, but I feel, I feel this way about Medina Valley. I don't think anybody's going to stop their offense. I think it's going to be, you know, I, I think the same thing about Heights and Tyvee. Yeah, I mean they've got they've got a couple. I I, I think Medina Valley's offense is going to score points. It's going to be is the defense going to stop? Them? I know what we're getting at is possibly a trap game coming up, but I don't see that. I don't see it, this being a trap game. I think these coaches have got these um, kids prepared, and I think they they're 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 letting them know that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's I don't think they're that I think they're prepared for a trap game if that's what we're getting at. Yeah, I I do too. I I think they are prepared for that, and I think Uvalde is that game. Um, I I don't think Memorial is going to be that game for Medina Valley. No. I think Uvalde is. Fortunately, like Maury's talked about all year, at least that game's at home. And it is for homecoming. I got to look to the coaching staff has done a great job of preparing the team each week, getting them ready to play every and, and week you know and, they, and not fall into that trap. And you know what they do that's going to play into the upcoming games is they've their rotation. I mean, they they play a lot of kids out there and they rotate them in and out and they get them a lot of experience. So you know if, if they're, and they're prepared by doing that. These guys have been on the field. They've seen. That they've seen these teams head to head. They're just not sitting there waiting on, on the sideline to get their 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 moment of fame. They're out in the field already. They're well, playing. These are the games that. These are the games that you get that. Yeah. Know? Yeah, and I think it needs to be said as as well, is that, that's how you build programs. Programs are built with in the weight room. <clears throat> excuse me, and they're built because more kids play. And we saw it in the second half last week's game where we talked yeah. about we might see the offense out there for one possession in the second half. Well, they didn't. They came right with the second offense, and they came right with the second defense. And it was second team that played the whole second half. And when you can do stuff like that, you're only going to get better. Well, and, and, yeah. and just, to, I mean, Charlie Marshall's out there for the whole second half, wasn't he? And he got a lot of experience. And, and, and not just to, to finish out this year, they're getting ready for next year. Absolutely. Yep. Totally agree. And I'm Maury, ready you, for my prediction. You got, yeah, you go go ahead. Let's let's what do that. What do you got, Maury? Forty two to nothing. Medina <laughs> Valley. Love to see it. I'm gonna go with twenty eight to fourteen. I'm gonna give you Valley the benefit of the doubt of a couple of scores. Um I'm gonna say thirty five to seventeen. Well no, I'm not gonna say that. I don't think they're gonna kick a field goal. I think it'll be thirty five to fourteen. I got to go with forty-two, fourteen. Well, there you have it. Because we know that it's a chance of rain, which it's we've fought rain every single I tell you game what, we have at not, home. It is unbelievable. We have not seen a bluebird sky since previous since before right. September first. It's good, good business if you're in the lawn mowing business. Yeah, so. I guess so. They're gonna you're gonna kill more, yeah, though. You got a I'm, mower in the jet boat. I'm I'm <laughs> glad there's cooler weather around Absolutely. now. Absolutely, hunting season. Yep. That's right. Mo Maury's sporting his camouflage, and he's ready to go. I saw his deer feeder hanging on the his tailgate feeder hanging on the back of his truck. We're switching from uh, we're, we're we're switching right away from summer mode straight into fall mode with this change of weather. Absolutely. Yep. Well, what are we moving into next? Year? Um, Maury want to talk about his fantasy football for the upcoming week? Uh, yeah, we can talk about a couple of streamers in a couple of positions. Um, if you're streaming for a quarterback. Don't be surprised if Jameis Winston is there at the top again and a big sleeper. And I know people are down on him, but uh, and I picked him up this week. Eli Manning on Monday night against the Atlanta Falcons. My prediction is Eli Manning will be one of the top five fantasy quarterbacks for this week. He needs to do something quick. And streaming at running backs you can go out and you can pick up marlon mack because i think he's finally going to see the action with 
the Indianapolis Colts. What about Derek Anderson starting for the Bills? No comment. <laughs> I think McCoy will probably have a big week. I'm hoping so he'll have a big week this week. I want to get to Jared. Uh, I know uh, <laughs> he's recording the game, but uh, you got Charlie Mar- Martin on a short lease. Jared, what do you think you can well, your outlook for him tonight well, like going against Rick Porcelain? Porcelain. <laughs> First of all, I, like Mari said, I'm recording the game. I don't know what's going on right now, and I don't want to know because I'm going straight home to watch. So just so everyone knows out there, J- Jared is a huge Astros fan. He's got he's supporting his Astros. And I'm going to give you all his, his numbers. So y'all can text him with the score when y'all leave. If you do that, I will. I'll throw my phone against the wall. He's I'm got not his kidding. Astros cap on, his Astros jersey on, and he and he's rooting them on. But he's recording the game, so he does not know what the score is. No, the but outcome. but Morton, what do you expect out of Morton? Uh, he hasn't pitched in a while since the regular season. He didn't get to pitch in the division series because they swept Cleveland. He would have pitched game four. Um, I think he's earned the right to pitch this game. I think he probably earned the right to start in front of Keuchel, but he's pitched well throughout the year. Hopefully that continues in these playoffs. The, the thing that they need to get working is their bats, and I am a I am not an A.J. Hinch fan. He does not manage his bullpen well, well at all. And I will say one thing, and it was a tough loss last night, but if all of America and everybody that has a vote for the MVP, if they didn't see enough last night to vote Alex Bregman for the MVP, then I really don't know what a baseball fan is looking for. Whether he's on your team or whether he is not on your team, the way that young man played in the field and at the plate, if he didn't earn a lot of respect last night, then... You really don't know baseball. No, and he, he's he's carried that team most of the year when they were players hurt, weren't hitting the ball. He carried them through a rough time, and and he w- he was their MVP for sure. It wasn't Altuve this year like it's been what, in the past. And he's done it quietly too. Well, yeah, and he, he does – he plays the game the right way. Like when you look at him play the game, he plays it like a Biggio. He hustles every time. He runs the ball – he runs it out to first base. He just he just plays the game the right way. Like you just watch him play, and I don't know. I, I enjoy watching that. I can't stand it when players don't run out ground balls and things like that. I don't like watching that. And he he does all those things. In his interviews, have you ever heard out of his mouth say, "Well, I did this or I did that"? No, and I, I've Never. actually heard him in losses where they'll talk about, "Hey, the home run you hit." He goes, well, "We didn't win, so it doesn't matter." You know, and those are the things that you look for in a teammate like that. He's there for the team, not himself. Agree. But hopefully it goes well for him tonight. We'll, we'll see. When I go home, my my whole house might get ripped apart tonight. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maury. So, in my pick six league, we had a carryover this week. Nobody won last week. The pot doubled. Six thousand dollars to the winner. I need somebody to. He's going to share it with all the listeners. I need somebody <laughs> to help me. Text him at the not best uh, six NFL games against the line this week. So I'm going to hand it to you just so you can look it over. Those are the lines. Well, as Maury looks that and over, we want to we see what Maury thinks on these. Uh, NFL games this week. As Maury looks that over, I, I just want to throw a couple of quick comments back uh, back out to the, the high school stuff that we've been talking about. And right now is a really good time to support Panther Athletics. It's an exciting time. Tennis team just got finished uh, doing and they had an outstanding season. And tennis team did great. The cross-country team just won district. Volleyball has already clinched the playoff spot. The, the, the varsity football team is doing a great job, and they're getting ready to roll in, hopefully, in the playoffs. And, and they're, it's an exciting time is what I'm, what I'm getting that. And, and support your athletics, support your, your sports boosters. And if you enjoy what we're doing over here, too, so support what our, the broadcast network so we can keep bringing these, these talk shows and games to you. Because it, it's, it's been a lot of fun. As far as I'm concerned, it's been a lot of fun doing this. And, you know, we can thank Sammy's out here for hosting us. Um, they've been doing a great job hosting us, and they ho- and they do a good job taking <coughs> care of the players and the coaches, and getting them eats and drinks. So a big shout out to Sammy's, and a big shout out to IMS Metal Fabricators for supporting the talk show. 
um, and they're real excited. They they they're involved with the volleyball program, and 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 they love hearing us talking about it, and they love watching watching the games and listening to the games uh, that we do for them. So a big shout out to IMS, to to Brian and his brother and his whole family that that supports the program. And and Dwayne mentioned that the tennis team and the cross country team have has done a great job. Just sitting across the table with the young ladies and the coach of the volleyball team, the excitement is there. I mean, the girls were excited. Coach Griggs likes to not show emotion. and But you could just tell when you mentioned clinching that playoff spot, you know, they all kind of sat up a little taller. You know, if you haven't watched this team, you've got to come out and watch this team because – what we witnessed last Tuesday at Harlan when Dwayne and Jeff were doing the game and I was just sitting there as a spectator. I don't know, people said they could they could hear me in the background hollering, but I'm sorry, but if you can't get excited with the way the volleyball team is headed right now and the football team and the whole Panther athletics, the Panther swim team. And that's one thing we forgot more exactly right. We forgot to mention the swim team. They had their per their first event October 1st last week, and they had a great showing. And, and it's it's right now, that program is budding right now. And if you want to help s uh, sponsor the swim team, they're selling T-shirts right now. Get a hold of someone on the swim program. It's a neat T-shirt, and, and I, I believe there's a panther on the front, and it says, who says cats can't swim? So, I mean, <laughs> they're selling those for those programs, and we bought two of them as a family. They're and I, actually uh, going to be on the show the next time we have uh, a show. Great to hear that. It'll be next week, but it might be the following week. And we'll get a little bit more into it. I've got a bunch of numbers on, on, on I, I didn't realize how many swimmers were out well, there I, in and, competition. And I'd like to say, Dwayne, I don't think we're going to broadcast a swimming meet. Probably not. We will talk them up. That's we right. We'll talk about them. So we welcome all swimmers as well. So, and, and, and I mean, for, I'll give you an example. For women's butterfly of 121 participants. Out of 121 participants, uh, Sylvia Anteveros plays 79th. And Victoria Parkhurst placed 110th. Men's Butterfly, out of 116 participants, Jet Winkler placed 17th. And Laz Maldonado placed 101st. I mean, do, those, you those real, do they realize how hard it is to do the butterfly stroke? Well, so, well, And we'll get into that more yeah. next time. And I, I want to ask the swim coach, what, what about the, uh, the, the, the belly flop? Contest. Did they have the belly flop I don't think they do that. Unless you would win that, Jeff. You got to be over fifty. Yep. You got over fifty. But congratulations to the swim program for getting a, a good start and and being another part of, a, of the athletic program from Medina Valley. Yeah, that's great. Uh, just one pick you can make there, Jeff, or two. Uh, you need to take uh, Chicago, getting the points from New England. It's only three and a half. You need to take it because it's a sucker bet. I'm telling you. Yeah, because they came off of a big Monday. Night Absolutely. Okay. And then you need to take. Uh, the Rams over San Francisco. In the hook. That could be a sucker bet, but on the Monday night game, you need to take the Giants. Okay. Yep, you've already said that. Okay, well, there's two good ones. Thank you, Maury. And uh, with that, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up the show here tonight. I'd like to. Remind everyone that we will be live from Panther Stadium on Friday night. Uh, 7.30 is game time. Uh, 7 o'clock is air time. We will be on, Mari and myself, and I think Jeff will be there for that game as well. And I'll be throwing my weight around. And, and so we'll be, uh, we'll be there to bring you that game live. It is homecoming for Medina Valley, so come out and support. And the volleyball game next Tuesday night will be live also. You can catch that um, – What's six o'clock? It'll is be six o'clock playoff implications. Six okay, yeah, six o'clock and there will be playoff implications for that. And you can also before the football game Friday night, the varsity game will start at five o'clock yeah. at Medina Valley Gym because of homecoming to allow the seniors to get to homecoming. So the volleyball game and Coach Deesa Griggs will be facing Floresville? Yes. Dwayne? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. tomorrow, uh, Friday night, we'll be facing Floresville. Two wins in the final two games, and then one win in the first round of the playoffs. We'll set a volleyball record for the 
wins. Most wins for Panther Volleyball. Panther Volleyball. So congratulations for already wrapping up a playoff berth, and good luck in the final two games of the season. Yep, for sure. Uh, go out and, uh, yeah, like Amari said, go support the volleyball team, and then you can drift over to the stadium as that varsity game starts at 5, and football game doesn't start till 7.30, so the chance to support both teams there uh, on the same night on homecoming. Um, for Jeff, Mari, and Dwayne, I'm Jared Lucky saying good night, God bless, and we will see you on Friday night when Panther football continues.